Let's wrap up this lecture by discussing a few clarifications that hopefully are going to avoid confusions in what follows. In logic and in this class, we often use sentences to talk about other sentences. So for example, you may say that the sentence Socrates is wise or a moron is a disjunction. And here we are using this entire sentence in order to talk about the embedded sentence Socrates is wise or a moron. And in this case, we are using the entire big sentence starting with the article the and ending with the word disjunction. And we are mentioning the embedded sentence Socrates is wise or a moron. Now, in order to distinguish between the sentence that we are using and the sentences that we are mentioning or talking about, we are using quotation marks. So in this case, you see the quotation marks around the sentence, Socrates is wise or a moron. And these quotation marks signal that here we are talking about a sentence or mentioning it, but not using it. So I'm not literally asserting that Socrates is either wise or a moron. I'm just mentioning the sentence in order to say something about it, namely that it is a disjunction. In this case, we are using a so-called meta language to talk about a so-called object language. In this course, we typically use English sentences to talk about TFL sentences. And that means that we are using English as a meta language in order to talk about TFL, which in this case is our object language. So for example, if you think about the sentence, the sentence A or B is a disjunction, that whole sentence is an English sentence. So English is our meta language. And we are talking about a TFL sentence. So TFL here is the object language that we are talking about. You may have noticed that throughout this lecture, I've been using two different fonts. Sometimes I've been using this rather edgy Arial font that you see in the first line on the slide. And sometimes I've been using a more curly font as you can see after the third bullet point. Now, the reason here is that sometimes we want to refer to specific TFL sentences, and sometimes we want to talk about general properties that all TFL sentences have. Now, the, the edgy, non-curly <laughs> sentence letters a, B, C, J, 50, and so on and so forth, these sentence letters are specific TFL sentences. Each one of these is a specific TFL sentences. But sometimes we do not want to speak about specific TFL sentences, but rather about general properties of any TFL sentence. And in that case, we use the curly so-called meta variables, A, B, C, and so on and so forth. So for example, if you think back to our inductive definition of a TFL sentence, that inductive definition said in the fourth clause that if A and B are sentences, then A or B is a sentence. And here I used the curly meta variables since I was trying to make a general claim about any TFL sentences whatsoever. So what that means is that a consequence of that definition is that since the capital letters A and B both are TFL sentences, the disjunction A or B is a TFL sentence. And furthermore, since the capital letter A and the disjunction A or B both are TFL sentences, it also follows from this definition that the disjunction A or A or B is a TFL sentence, and so on and so forth. So the meta variables allow us to make general statements about any TFL sentences whatsoever without referring to specific TFL sentences.
As a final clarificatory remark, we will often use the three dots forming a little pyramid, pyramid to some symbolize a conclusion indicator. So for example, if you think about the argument, all humans are mortal, Socrates is human, therefore Socrates is mortal, we can represent the word therefore, which is our conclusion indicator, using these three dots. That was it for today. In the next lecture, we are going to go on to discuss truth tables and find out how we can use truth tables to evaluate the validity of arguments.